Welcome to a primer on joint all domain operations. I'm Major Scott Vandewater from the May Center for Doctrine, and I'll be taking you through some of the latest thinking on joint all domain operations, or JDO. A special thanks to Dr. Mulgan from Half A3 for several of these slides. Joint all domain operations has been in the news a lot lately. Many of our senior leaders are looking very closely at what the future of American war looks like. As a result, the joint staff has taken a special interest into what some are calling Joint All-Domain Operations and the subset Joint All-Domain Command and Control, or JADC2. The term JADO, at its surface, calls for increased cooperation across all of the warfighting domains as defined by joint doctrine. That said, what is a domain? There is presently no doctrinal definition of a domain. Joint doctrine does provide a list of warfighting domains. They include space, air, land, maritime, and cyberspace, which is part of the information environment. The electromagnetic spectrum is not technically a doctrinal domain, but there have been several attempts to make it so, with some efforts ongoing. Air Force Doctrine Annex 3-99 defines joint all-domain operations as actions by the joint force in multiple domains, integrated in planning, and synchronized and executed at speed and scale needed to gain advantage and accomplish the mission. Comprised of air, land, maritime, cyberspace, and space domains, plus the electromagnetic spectrum, EMS, and joint all-domain command and control as the art and science of decision-making to rapidly translate decisions into action, leveraging capabilities across all domains with mission partners to achieve operational and informational advantage in competition and conflict. Some have described these definitions as unsatisfying, so if you feel that way, you're not alone. Ultimately, JADO is trying to present a solution to some of the issues identified by the National Security Strategy with respect to the erosion of our national competitive edge. Our adversaries have made asymmetric investments in A2AD complexes, which have challenged our ability to operate with impunity. With the return of great power competition to our national consciousness, we have gained greater awareness of the challenges that lie ahead. The preceding 20 years of low-intensity conflict have led to an appreciation of the challenges we face in integrating capabilities across domains and across government due to factors such as operational timeline, manpower-intensive planning, inflexible operational constructs bound by high-level coordination, and artificialities associated with administrative boundaries, be they geographic, service, domain, or U.S. code title. So what's the big deal? Didn't Goldwater Nichols already tell us to be joint and all domain? Joint all domain operations is the next step in this evolution. While we take the first few steps in JADO under the current operating paradigm, many believe that a much more significant change needs to happen to realize the ultimate vision. Modifications to the unified command plan, joint command and control structures, and even the Goldwater Nichols Act have been called for in an effort to posture the DoD for the future. That's a lot of change. So is all of this really new? We've been doing operations across domain boundaries for centuries. Why is what we're talking about now different? The critical insight to this question is in the increasing convergence of and fluidity between domains. For simplicity, let's look at the air domain as an example. Air capabilities are increasingly enhanced and dependent upon space, cyber, and land. An air platform must now address attack vectors from four other domains to assure its success. Let's look at this in an analogy. Historically, we've made some assumptions about our access and dominance across domains. All of our domains have lined up alongside each other, and so long as everyone stays roughly online, we move forward into the battle space with minimal concerns about our cross-domain flanks. Our adversaries have been developing a number of asymmetric capabilities which have challenged our domain dominance in novel ways. As a result, we can no longer assume that our flanks are secure. As an example, let's look at a suppression of enemy air defenses mission. Historically, our air forces, red in the graphic, have advanced on the enemy's surface-to-air missile capabilities, blue, and been successful. Let us suppose, however, that our adversary has some EMS or cyber capability, green, which is capable of affecting our air assets. This intra-domain flanking maneuver presents access to our squishy underbelly, our dependence on other domains for mission success. This is both a vulnerability and an opportunity. 
the adversary is no less susceptible to intra-domain attack, though in many cases, the character of their vulnerability may be different. So purely for the purpose of this briefing, let me outline some terms. Keep in mind, these are descriptions which are useful for thinking, but are non-doctrinal. Intra-domain means from one domain to the same domain. Inter-domain means from one domain into another. And trans-domain, and again, for this briefing only, means from one domain into another to achieve objectives in still another. An example would be using EMS to jam a satellite, which is critical to an RPA. That is, EMS to space yielding an air effect. Another analogy. Our ability to dominate globally has been built on the back of the American taxpayer. Since World War II, we have leveraged the most exquisite capabilities and platforms across every domain and have created the equivalent of a military dream team. As our technology accelerates and our ability to sustain the remnant of the Cold War wanes, we are faced with a choice. Continue to limp along a huge force or modernize a smaller one. Jado presents a third option. Create a miracle on ice type of joint force. A more rough and ready, less exquisite force where the strength lies in team synergies vice individual efforts. This concept dovetails nicely into thinking in terms of systems rather than individual lines of effort. Having teams capable of a deeper understanding of team dynamics and having a reflexive ability to make connections at speed and volume. One of my all-time favorite quotes is, All models are wrong, some are useful, by the mathematician George E.P. Box. On the bottom of the slide are two models of the operating environment, depicting the domains, right side in red, and the environments. The left side is from Joint Pub 5.0. The right side is from the Jado Doctrine publication. As mentioned earlier, agility between domains is a critical change in the operating environment. Nations and their militaries are dealing with these changes in different ways. The Chinese Communist Party, for example, along with some Russian elements, are trying to limit and control the agility across domains and environments through things like social credit systems and leveraging analog communication systems. The US, on the other hand, has taken a much more permissive view and is attempting to accelerate, enhance, and harness the agility enabled by technology. In many ways, this is the central tension in two competing theories of victory. Historically, due to the cumbersome nature of inter- and trans-domain operations, for simplicity, among other reasons, we have aligned our forces to domains and have oriented our seams along those lines. So long as our adversary does the same, we meet principally in intra-domain tactical competitions. Some may say, why have seams at all? This presents a logistics and coordination problem which is as old as warfare. Without silos, the number of planners, for example, which would need to coordinate with one another, becomes untenable and unmanageable. Ultimately, what Jado intends to do is to orient the seams perpendicular to the adversary, to allow the forces closest to the enemy to work seamlessly, pun intended, with one another and to leverage one another's strengths to expose adversary weakness, and to prevent adversary exploitation of friendly seams. One last model. If our seams are tailored to have dissimilar structures, this presents an even more challenging problem to the adversary as they attempt to find a seam which is both accessible and exploitable. In this final model, tearing any one seam will leave a force which is able to maintain its momentum and integrity and continue to fight while repairing the exploited seam. Two critical points here. Some have asked, what about our allies? Great point. In the news recently, in fact, you can find evidence that our senior leaders are already thinking this way. The Air Force and Army have agreed to work on what they're calling CJAD C2, highlighting the need to consider our allies. Additionally, just as Russia and China are leveraging other parts of their governments to address great power competition, JADO, as a concept, acknowledges the need for interagency cooperation and a need to coordinate and attain unity of effort when unity of command is not attainable. This is particularly applicable when we talk about competitive activities short of war and gray zone activities. So what are the main points? How might we operate under a JADO construct? The JADO concept is still in development, but the Doctrine Center has pulled six core ideas which are applicable to operations today. 
Centralized control, decentralized execution through mission type orders. I want to be clear about something here. This is nothing new. That said, we have created a system for the violent extremist fight, which runs counter to the decentralized execution portion. This return to the foundational premise of air power will allow decentralized commanders to execute with disciplined initiative, even if disconnected from higher headquarters. Delegation of Authority I would like to pull an important thread on this. This is not intended to be only decision authority, but also authorities in the legal sense. Due to the character of our ongoing conflicts, the decision authority to utilize certain effects, or even something as simple as Target Engagement Authority TEA, has been retained at arguably arbitrarily high levels. To be effective against a peer or near-peer competitor, the joint force must have the ability to make decisions without having to mother may I four or five echelons above. Sharing of information. Information sharing has been an important part of operations across recorded history. Often the sources of information are disconnected from the consumers of the same, linked only through higher headquarters who collect, process, exploit, synthesize, and disseminate that information. In JADO, as envisioned, machine-to-machine -machine communication coupled with automated synthesis will enable our tactical edge to have the best possible battlefield picture even when disconnected from higher headquarters. This may sound a bit like science fiction, and we have a long way to go before this is realized at scale, but ongoing efforts like the Army's Project Convergence and the Air Force's ABMS System of Systems, the MDTF, and the Shadow Operations Center are working hard to enable sharing and processing of information at the tactical edge to enable our forces with the most up-to-date and relevant knowledge at the time of need. Integrated Planning Reflecting on the SEAM slide, our current planning integration, for AIR for example, is conducted at the JFAC or CFAC level and across an entire theater. As a result, integration with other domains, space, cyber, land, etc., is limited by the planning cycle and is often the first thing to drop when our planning elements are cognitive bandwidth limited. Now let's take this to a major combat operation, which is global in scope and scale. Conducting integrated planning across all domains globally is too large of a task for even the largest air operations center. And you better believe that air operations center would be a high priority target for an adversary if they had the chance to take it out. As a result, the vision for integrated planning resembles a more distributed model, with integration taking place across domains at echelon rather than centrally. Certain high demand, low density assets would be centrally managed and forces would be assigned or attached to meet the needs of joint commanders leading forces akin to those of a joint task force. These joint task force commanders and their planners would ensure their forces were synchronized and integrated to achieve their objectives. Risk Identification and Mitigation Risk across the force takes on many nomenclatures. For some, the terms risk to force and risk to mission are the two metrics. To the air component, there is largely consideration for acceptable level of risk, or ALR. Still further, among cyber and space professionals, measures like intel gain loss and technical gain loss, IGL and TGL, are measures of risk. While the JADO framework does not yet propose a common lexicon for risk, and there are some existing joint risk frameworks, the message in JADO is that our view of risk is generally very domain specific and neglects risk which we displace to other domains. For example, an ISR aircraft which doesn't take off due to weather hasn't simply mitigated risk. It has displaced risk to the ground force which decides to action its objective in spite of the lack of ISR support. This interdomain risk displacement is generally unaccounted for in decision making. The use of joint structures for command and control and force employment. Finally, it is important to keep in mind that the 3-99 is titled the DAF role in JADO for a very important reason. We at Air Force Doctrine cannot write joint doctrine in a vacuum. As a result, the doctrine as it is written will constitute a portion of the Air Force's submission to the joint force when it begins the process of codifying how the joint force will move forward with the service ideas on JADO and JADC2. Part of our entering argument is that we will need to be fighting in groups which resemble joint task forces 
in order to accomplish the level of integration and synchronization. These joint organizations will be more than coordination or liaison elements. They will be the C2 which underpins our joint integration. As we apply those principles through the lenses of the seven joint functions, we see four primary outcomes. First, and this one might sound familiar, a substantiated need for JADC2 structures. Because, as I mentioned, the need for JADC2 structures is part of the hypothesis, if we do not demonstrate their necessity to our joint partners, we will not be able to achieve JADO as envisioned. As a result, an output of our approach must be the demonstration and substantiation of a need for JADC2. Accelerate and increase the capacity to develop decision quality information. If we intend to delegate authority and authorities to our leaders at Echelon, we need to provide them with the relevant information to make good decisions at a speed and scale appropriate to their circumstance. As we look at the principle of information sharing and apply that through our seven joint functions, we see this increase in capacity for decision quality information as an output. Organize, train, and equip forces to converge in multiple domains in operationally relevant timeframes. This again speaks to an attempt to keep the lens of the DAF role in JADO to a service perspective. For the DAF to contribute to JADO, we must OT&E forces to enable joint force convergence across domains. Create dilemmas for an adversary. Not only must our forces be postured to converge, but we must also be postured to do so deliberately in an effort to create dilemmas for an adversary. These dilemmas force the enemy to make a choice between two bad, often equally bad, courses of action. One way of thinking about certain portions of JADO is to consider the explore-exploit tension. The idea of explore versus exploit comes from mathematics and can be thought of through the lens of a casino. Imagine you have several slot machines lined up, all with a certain chance of a payout. How would you maximize the amount of money you have over time? I know some of you are probably thinking, by walking away. Well, that's right in this case, but bear with me here. In the case of these fictional slot machines, with no knowledge, you would start by trying each of them equally. Then, as some seem to pay off more, you would lean on them harder, as you had a greater knowledge of the environment. But you'd always have to leave some amount of room for experimentally finding out your theory was wrong. This simplistic example solution does not have direct applicability to warfare, however the concepts do. Explore, exploit holds true in Jam vs. Collect, or Destroy vs. Observe, or Launch vs. Hold on Alert, or Surge vs. Reconstitute. Joint commanders can use knowledge of Explore vs. Exploit to posture themselves across domains appropriately, to assume risk, and to force package in ways advantageous to the phase of competition or conflict in which they find themselves. The joint concept for operations in the information environment or JCOIE, argues that the joint force must understand how to manipulate and leverage information and the inherent informational aspects of activities to send deliberate messages. All joint force actions, written or spoken words, or displayed or related images have informational aspects that communicate some message or intent, which can be leveraged to support the achievement of joint force objectives. The JCOIE describes the construct of informational power IP, as the ability to leverage information to shape perceptions, attitudes, and other elements that drive desired behavior and the course of events. It established the imperative to operationalize and institutionalize the integration of information with traditional military physical power. So where are we today? Across the joint force, there is some uncertainty on where we're all headed. The Army published TRADOC Manual 525-3-1, entitled The U.S. Army in Multi-Domain Operations 2028, which is their guiding document. The Marine Corps has Force Design 2030, and the Navy has a Design for Maintaining Maritime Superiority 2.0. Each of these speaks to how the services intend to interoperate in the future operating environment. Largely independent of these efforts, the Joint Staff has put out a few classified documents in draft to include the Joint Concept for Command and Control and the Joint Warfighting Concept, which outline many of the ideas previously discussed. Together, these documents begin to paint a picture of our future force. The DAF role in JADO doctrine publication, along with the AFWIC 
JADO, and JADC2 concepts, supported by technological development and education, represent the Air Force's current trajectory in contribution to the larger DoD discussion. If you would like to know more, please join our APAN website. You can reach it at www.doctrine.af.mil slash JADO. There you'll find multimedia resources to include videos and documents from around the Joint Force on related topics. In addition, you can contribute to the discussion by registering with the site and contributing via posts. Thank you for your time and attention. Please feel free to reach out to us via social media or through our org box, which you can find in the global address list.